The Incredible Hulk will not be presented this evening. I see Happy New Year in the chat. Yes, Happy New Year, everybody. And let's talk about what's in theaters this week. We mentioned it last week. Uh, you can go out now and see Cyrano, based on the Edmund Rostand play, Cyrano de Bergerac, rebranded as Cyrano, because Roxanne was already taken. And calling it Christian would just confuse fans of Fifty Shades of Grey. It's movie nonsense! Looking for the clip of uh, the Kevin Smith deal, but I don't see it. So I hear it. Let's try this instead. Welcome to Movie Nonsense, everybody. <laughs> Happening every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern, where Adam and I just talk about whatever the hell we feel like. That's kind of the show. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> uh, so if you've seen us before, if you've watched any of the Movie Guys podcasts, we've been doing them since 2009 from comedy videos in my garage right on through full-on 90-minute uh, epics called the movie Showcast through to the Ford Fiesta, which is currently going on, and now this show as well. So we've decided to do the once-a-week deal where we talk about whatever we've seen, whatever's happening, what's new in theaters. And if you like what you see, please tell people because, you know, it doesn't hurt to have more eyeballs on us while we get up and do this stuff, get up at the crack of three and do this. <laughs> uh, you can follow us at the Movie Guys. Or go to themovieguys.net for all the podcast appearances on radio and podcast shows. There's interviews. There's uh, red carpet stuff. There's articles. Basically, search the internet and you'll find us, right? What the fuck is the internet? There it is. I was ready for that. Who gives a shit? <laughs> no, wrong, wrong. No, that, that clip is specifically <laughs> here for when we talk about the Hawkeye controversy with Lon Harris uh, in about a half hour. <laughs> You know what? We jumped onto this so, and then Adam and I jumped on here, and then we jumped on the air. We didn't have even time to say, Adam, I don't know if your mic's hooked up for the clearest audio we could get. Oh, you're right. You yeah, know you what? might be going I, through computer audio, and we want to hear everything you are crystal correct. clear. That's what, you are what you're correct. saying. Hold so. on. Yes, exactly. Uh, In the meantime, William, thanks for showing up to the live show. We appreciate that, man. And, there we go. Uh, now you should else. be hearing the smooth oh, sounds of Adam Witt in the morning. <laughs> yes, if you follow us on the movie trivia Schmodown as well, you'll know those dulcet tones from Adam uh, managing the dungeon as he did this year. What we're doing next year, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? Uh, now, you mentioned Lon. Give him a nice plug so people know that our buddy from the Schmodown is coming. Yes, uh, at, at Lon's on Twitter, and I think uh, probably a lot of people here are fans of Lon Harris. 
Lon is absolutely great. He's uh, 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 he's my Twitter guide. I, I swear, I, if I like 50 things in a week, 49 of them are probably Lon's. Uh, he's got great takes on things. And, and the most important thing is he really, you know, he pays attention to the Internet, uh, all the things going on, all the little controversies and stuff like that. And so I, late last night, I'm looking and I, re- and I read that there is a controversy over Hawkeye and it's a controversy over your favorite part of the entire show. Uh, and, uh, so, you know, as I was, I was like, I could come on here and I could just explain what Lon had to say about it, or we could bring Lon on and awesomely, he was available very, very short notice, uh, to come on. So, and, and I, uh, well, I'll let him plug other things cause he's involved in all kinds of other shows, uh, all over the place. It, it's pretty, pretty sure he's a frequent writer for uh, a couple of the, um, you know, tra- trailer reaction shows, the, the, the parody ones. Uh, so we'll let him plug that sort of stuff when he comes on here. Um, but uh, yeah, very funny man, great guy. And uh, it's awesome that he could come on today because I really want him to explain this to us and uh, have a discussion with Lon, which is fun because the internet is such a strange thing. We, we can't enjoy anything. We're not allowed to enjoy anything, Paul. There's a <laughs> Hawkeye TV show. This is the bottom line here. There is a Hawkeye TV show. We should be the most grateful people on earth that we have a Hawkeye TV show. I used to sit there, you know, we, we, we played that little Incredible Hulk thing at the top there. Incredible Hulk will not be seen tonight. Uh, and that, well, if that preceded anything but the Star Wars Holiday Special, which is actually what that that moment is from, uh, I would have been very upset as a kid because I started planning my day at like 3 p.m. on Saturdays to to watch the Wonder Woman and uh, Hulk uh, hour long of each of those. And compared to what we have today, those suck. But it's all we had. <laughs> it's all we had was the Hulk. We had Wonder Woman. We had Christopher Reeve in theaters. And now a bunch of people who... I say clearly did not see Superman four in the theaters are complaining about one tiny thing about the fact that there's a Hawkeye TV show, a Hawkeye TV show, Paul. Right. Yeah. And that's what I watched after a Boba Fett TV show. There's a Boba Fett TV show, Paul. I know. Well, listen, can you imagine like no incredible Hulk? Well, at least it's star Wars. And then ooh, the holiday special. Well, <laughs> Yeah. Hey, not to me as a kid, man, sitting there on the uh, living room floor, uh, you know, uh, yeah, watching absolutely. Star Wars in my living room. No, 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 no. That is a that is a rewriting of that thing that 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 is terrible. It is terrible. But at that time, that was not terrible. And, well, you know, it, well, it, to think that's where Boba Fett launched. And now today we have a live action show. It's just oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I mean, uh, yeah. And, and we'll get to that, too. We end up talking a lot of TV here on the Movie Guys Movie Nonsense. But I tell you what, these are not TV shows. These are pieces of cinema that are being delivered in a new medium. You know, these are movies. Uh, yeah. it, you know, the, calling them TV shows. I was just having this discussion with my roommate. This NCI, there's what, 12 NCISs? I, I don't follow. Who would know? I, who would know? I, that is TV to me. The, the, this stuff transcends TV. So, uh, yeah, I, I, it, we might as well call it the Hawkeye movie that aired in six parts, you know. <laughs> well, bold, bold, uh, bold statement there, William. <laughs> <laughs> big take, big take, hot take. Well, yeah, I mean, that's when they I think it was The Sopranos when they first started saying, no, this is cinematic television now. We're, right. we're beyond that. So, I mean, and so how many years removed from that are we? Uh, 12 or more or something like that more than that well it's really interesting i don't know when it came up but yeah yeah, we're now into cinematic tales just told on a smaller screen well it's a really interesting ramp up to that sort of thing too because yes tv's you tv used to have to be absolutely encapsulated you know at the end of each episode everything had to be returned back to normal so that you could pick it up at any time and the progress things have made like the sopranos came out in an era well first of all hbo saying tv could be something different is, is you know uh is pretty interesting but then dvd sets came out the idea of binging came out and that's even before streaming streaming comes out and now that is the way you watch tv in a row like a movie <laughs> well, what do you, how do you make of that because i listen to howard stern i listen to 12 hours of howard stern a week or more however many <laughs> hours he'll put up now that he's you know in, in his mid to late 60s and right does however many hours he cares he's been to. doing it since like 82 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he is uh, upset by movie shows that don't put out everything all at once. He wants to, oh. he wants to watch a show and get through it. But to me, it's like, man, when you were waiting for the next Game of Thrones, 
Like the uh, the whole nation were chat. Now you don't know when. Like some people are finished with Cobra Kai. I'm on episode four, so I can't talk to everybody. And it's all. But like the the talk that would happen, I think, when you held out. So I think Disney's doing it right. In that you know, we'll go waiting on this finale for Hawkeye. Oh, we think we know we, we know who's coming now based on the next to last episode they show you. Know. So the whole thing generates more conversation. I think. It's a better. It's a, obviously an old school way to go, and I go old school on most things. Paul, are you saying that they successfully teased each next episode by ending each episode with something that would spin you into the next one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so there. So Marvel's been pretty good at teasing things, right? That <laughs> if they don't tease something just once, we should be okay with that. We'll let Lon Harris oh, explain. I see. <laughs> you have <laughs> set the table, is it? All right. I have set the I heard- let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well let's talk about what's new and that would be because it's january it man because for a while there every week we had like nine movies coming out because of the the end incredible of bump that they do so there was t- too much to talk about this week we got one movie and it <laughs> is the, the 355 the 355 i don't even know this do i know this well adam we'll play a little game it's called right. guess what it's about all right <laughs> okay uh, i'll give you three guesses as to what the 355 is all about all right all right and uh all right go the three five five uh what is what is 13 alex <laughs> i see what you did there uh nope I, uh, the the three five five three five five is a documentary about the uh veterans memorial tollway is that what that is <laughs> the three five five i see that's in chicago so a nice reference but yeah. no uh the three five five uh, Jessica Chastain hangs out with her super spy friends in Albania. Three five five. That's uh, the international international dialect code for Albania. For Albania. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. You I'm impressed got, you knew you that, there, but Kevin. no, you're zero for three, Adam. <laughs> uh, let me give you a rundown of what the three five five is actually about. I made some notes here so we can chat about it properly. Now, I, I of course immediately wondered what is the three five five, and turns out that is. Uh, code for a female spy uh, for the Patriots during the American Revolution. Really? So now they've adopted it to this group of female spies who, listen, the New Year's starting off right. We're all coming together. You have, uh, let me make sure I list them all correctly. You have an American, British, German, Colombian, and Chinese secret agents all getting together to stop World War III. Uh, so, oh, my God. Look, if you were looking to, you know, look for something that was going to, yeah, and there they all are, and... Uh, Ooh, it's uh, what do you got? Jessica Chastain, Penelope Cruz, Lupita yeah. Nyong'o, Diane Kruger, and and Fan Bingbing, who's yeah. an Asian actress who was also in, of course, X Men movies. And I don't know how Sebastian Stan got in the middle of all this casting, but uh, <laughs> lucky guy because these are uh, smart, beautiful actresses. And uh, and yeah, well, you know, something- it's, yeah. it's cool. It's cool because it's like they do stunt casting in a certain way, like Ocean's Eight, right? It's you know, stunt casting, it's like eight great actresses and, and you know, they're, they're doing the Oceans thing. And I just like, but what a, what a cast you can put together of like like an all-female, you know, super spy cast, you know. And we've come a long way, because I watched Goldfinger over the holidays. We've come a long way from Goldfinger's uh, aerial uh, uh, vixens or whatever that the, what is it, the Goldfinger's flying something you know squad Flying or whatever bitties. yeah yeah <laughs> so th- so this is this is i mean you know look at the talent you can get when you're like all right let's go with like an all-female are they they spies what did you say the three yeah they're all secret agents for? from their various places oh, pia man. mi6 etc so they well, all that's come cool together. That's cool, too, because there's always a thing of, like, can these people work together? You know, like, can the CIA and FBI work together? Can the whatever international, you know, this or that work together? So that's pretty cool. I like and it, it says from the studio that brought you Jason Bourne, so that's universal. But let's go even deeper into the the talent on hand, and it's Simon Kinberg, who you probably know oh. produced X-Men First Class, Days of Future Past, The Martian, Deadpool, Deadpool 2, and Logan. Yeah. This is his second feature as a director. Unfortunately, his first was Dark Phoenix. But the point is, say. he's got he's got some serious credit. Uh, and while shooting Dark Phoenix, Jessica Chastain pitched this to him. So oh, now, we have, wow. now we have the movie. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I mean, I don't know. You know, X-Men Dark Phoenix owes you nothing for any critics. I'll say that. I mean, they made an <laughs> X-Men movie. They made a Dark Phoenix movie. It's, it takes place. There's space shuttles and X-Men going into space and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, well, you're going to have a complaint about that? Come on. And, and who gives a damn? Because uh, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Fassbender was in it. And there's nothing better than Fassbender playing Magneto. I didn't who even. Who gives a shit? 
<laughs> I thought he was done, and then he showed up in this one. I'm like, there you go. That's so, awesome. Oh, look, two but, people chimed in knowing what this was, Adam. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, all right. It's a little less politically correct than what I was trying to assemble there. Pussy Galore's Flying Circus. That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, we have come a long way in terms of uh, female representation as spies and, and, and uh, people of action, <laughs> yeah, you know. So. <laughs> uh, oh, and good news for Hugh Jackman fans. Never say never for his returning to the uh, X-Men franchise because Kinberg is now producing a film called Logan's Run. So... Wow! Logan's back! <laughs> Logan's back! <laughs> and he'll die uh, when he's 20. So. That's uh, fantastic. So interesting facts about the film Bing Bing Fan. Or I never know if it's Bing Bing Fan or Fan Bing Bing. I think because, it can be pronounced know, either Ming, way. They always said Yao Ming. They called him Yao, like referring to his last name. So I don't know. But either way, she had this tax evasion scandal in 2018 I want to read about. Really? Because she didn't work for a bit while she cleared it up. She and her company created a fake contract to make it seem like she was paid less than she was for a, for a film uh, role. Ten million in Chinese yuan, which is a million in the, in the States, in USD. The real payout was 60, not 10. So as a result, she had to pay 127 million in American to avoid prosecution. So, uh, yeah, she did that and apologized and is now working again. So, wow. Uh, crazy mean- story about her. But... Then the whole thing was shot in 2019. So we're still getting pre-pandemic movies. Like now, two yeah. years into this damn thing. Well, that's what's interesting is January has always been, January and February have always been a dumping ground, right? Of just like whatever, you know, oftentimes it's whatever the studios couldn't, uh, you know, some somewhat prestige but didn't make it to the Oscars. And then just random. I mean, January and February are random dumping ground. So this is kind of interesting in the post-pandemic because they really shoved a lot of movies in the last four months, five months. That uh, what we're going to get for January. I love that there's one movie out this week. Like <laughs> yeah. steering clear of Spider Man, steering clear of like yeah. everyone sitting at home watching The Matrix. Uh, yeah. So are they? I mean, that's what they? we'll never know. I mean, the Matrix tanked at the box office, but are people watching it at home? Well, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss this with uh, uh, Lon ha- Harris here momentarily. But uh, there's there's a big desire from critics to uh, to declare something a failure. Uh, so West Side Story was a failure. Uh, how, uh, wh- See, told you you shouldn't have made a movie, person. You know, what I mean, I guess that's that's how I interpret Steven it. Steven Spielberg, you shouldn't have made a movie. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's the thing too. They're like trying to declare the Matrix a bomb too. But I actually think it did pretty well in theaters. I don't know. We we no, it didn't. Actually, it did. It made twelve million. It made single oh, digit millions. Single this digit. Week because they can watch it at home, but yeah. we won't know how it did at home either. You know. Because yeah, I the, was alone in a the theater in Bowling Green, Kentucky, watching the Matrix. Well, I don't really want to talk about that. But to your point about January, or what we used to call January, <laughs> it used to be a place for limo action movies, Nicolas Cage right. films like Season of the Witch or Bangkok Dangerous, Ooh. none of the good stuff. Ooh, yeah. Uh, and ho- yeah, horror films like the silent ones are a new paranormal activity when you were already seven movies. Genre. It's a good genre place. Yeah. So this flips the script. So now we have female adventures with big names. You know, um, they spent $20 million a can to have this to get this movie. Universal did after premiere. So it's a big deal. And so I was uh, kind of shocked to see it come out in January. I say he spent $20 million on it. Stick it out in May and have it compete against the big boys. There's room for everybody in the summer a lot of times. Yeah. So we'll see if people go out to see all the the award-nominated stuff that uh, – or potential potentially nominated stuff um, with this week to catch up on you know the dump they do at the end of December. Or if perhaps this will find its audience and, uh, and sneak in there with a good box office. I hope so. I hope it's good, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. I'm, this. This looks. And, and now that you've mentioned it with Sebastian Stan stuff, I'm like, I think I have seen a trailer for this, and uh, was it definitely piqued my interest. It, it, Paul, is it a good sign or a bad sign when someone claims from the studio that brought you? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've been looking at that for a long time, and, and Deadpool studio. finally called it out. You know, when they said they're from the the studio that brought you Beauty and the Beast or something. <laughs> like, well, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's like, at least that's got a good such yeah, a wide group of movies it's a dumb yeah you're like promote, but. from the studio that brought you the parallax view i mean i don't know and like 
<laughs> yeah. The studio that brought you the Godfather three. I mean, that, any movie that's coming like Sony, you know, just released Spider Man, but they're not going to say it's from the studio that brought you, uh, you know, uh, um, Strange Magic or I don't know. I can't think of a Sony movie. Well, it'd be right like now. saying Disney you know, from the studio that brought you Scream when they're promoting like Encanto. You know, it's right. true. They brought it's to true. mention films, and that is. but uh, let's let's uh, bag this for a second and go to a broader what's coming up not just this week but let's look at i saw something earlier today it was kind of like the geek's guide to 2022 and this okay. is okay oh, <laughs> so oh, 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 oh my god i was expecting Woo. so Woo. this month morbius next month uncharted oh. which uh, i hope for good things i like uh tom holland maybe even more than Wahlberg, so that should be fun and then the batman just looks great oh. March release, Paul. I mean, I was just about to say this uh, when we let me scooch over here. Uh, I was just about to say this. <laughs> now I was just about to say how the uh, the pandemic has just thrown uh, the release for movies into just chaos. Here's Batman in March 2022. Now, why is that? Is that to avoid the Sonic 2 release date? I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell why things come out anymore. And that we were just talking about the 355. Uh, you know, that the some of the traditional things you would expect to be released in February, like Malignant. Malignant would be a classic February release. And, you know, I, I guess that was out for probably for October, wasn't it? I guess. That would, but that makes a little more sense. But I mean, who can remember? It was pandemic. So it's like, I don't know. The months yeah. blended together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I know. It, that's what's crazy. And maybe that's the release of this is like, you know, oh, my God, look at this list. Well, I know for a fact uh, when you get to May, John Wick 4, I believe, has been postponed. But Top Gun finally coming out. I mean, I think Paramount's, yeah. you know, uh, kicking themselves after pushing it from November 19th because November 19th. Ghostbusters moved from the 10th to the 19th or the 12th to the 19th to avoid to get closer to Thanksgiving. And sure enough, they made one hundred and twenty three million dollars, two hundred and twenty some nation uh, worldwide on a seventy five million dollar budget because wisely Reitman spent a crap ton less than Paul Feig did. And so that movie's a win. And Top Gun could have been twice that size based on, you know, uh, based on those numbers and the anticipation of this film, but they got scared about cinematic releases, even after Shang-Chi, which shocked me. And uh, of course, now we saw what happened with Spider-Man. I think it was the wrong call, but we'll finally get it in May and we'll finally get a jackass in February, uh, both, you know, pushed off from this year by Paramount. Yeah. Well, jackass is a classic February release, I'd say, but yeah, Top Gun, Top Gun, that's a huge mistake. I mean, you're, that's like, uh, uh, well, not a huge mistake because it's a summer movie. But uh, two years after it was supposed to be released, which is nuts. Yeah. But, uh, um, I mean, but, you know, when you think about like November, Thanksgiving or whatever, you're like, uh, you're going to go see a, a, a movie with your uncle and your other uncle and your dad. You're like, what do we all go see, man? Top Gun Maverick would have been a uh, solid, solid. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know this was coming as soon as it, was but the June sees the Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, you got they made Buzz a new Light Jurassic Years, Park uh, movie. Let your solo film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And, and well, Thor: Love and Thunder. I thought, I'm sure that was holidays, but that's coming sooner than I thought as well. Oh my God! Look at this! Look at this amazing lineup. Avatar two. <laughs> that's actually coming out. Finally. That's actually yeah. Good oh Lord. my God! I'll take it. Major move. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spider Man, the Spider Man into the Spider Verse sequel, the Flash movie, which of course will feature Michael Keaton returning to play uh, Batman Avatar. Yeah, yes, Avatar Two is happening, and so is Three the next year. So he, it's what, it's what Cameron's been doing because he hasn't been doing anything else. And also, I have to, I have to say, when did I stop? Knowing when movies were being made, because I look at this and I go, they made a J- John Wick Four. There, there is Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I'm finding that out like last week when so I was like, I, shouldn't I know when these things are being made? But no, it's great. It makes everything more of a surprise too. I'm like, ah. And it's after so cool. Disney Plus Day, we covered a lot of the Marvel and Star Wars films. You see, those are on the bottom of the TBA because they're still got to figure them out. Secret Invasion, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Moon Knight, and Andor right. are all Moon sort Knight. of uh, coming out, but who knows when? But that it's a stacked year, if you like Comic Con. <laughs> wow wow well everybody does everybody's a comic-con attendee now everyone in america you know this this stuff doesn't appeal to just a, a small select group anymore 
The world has changed, Paul. Yes, it is. Nerd is fashionable. It's so. awesome. It's yeah, awesome. but also I think back to your Batman comment. It, it, ever since like three hundred, of course, the the spring hit has been uh, a thing, you know. And they've tried to put one movie out that you know, like your uh, Great and Powerful Oz, or something that would come out in the spring that would fill that time slot of March and be a hit. Then, of course, the summer movies started moving back from the beginning of May. It had Fast and Furious movies coming out at the beginning of April. So it's all kind of blended together to make this January and February are dumping grounds, and then it gets interesting. Yeah. So, wow. All right. Let's uh, – That's just – oh, oh, one thing I want to say about this yeah. too. DC League of Super Pets. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I just love that DC tried to do what Marvel did on a one-to-one basis for quite a while there. It's like, oh, you're releasing your, uh, you know, it's Captain America Civil War. Well, then we've got a Justice League. That's such a one-to-one like, and that they just couldn't do it. And again, Marvel drinks unicorn tears. I don't know what they're doing. They are just absolute perfection. But uh, but I just love that the the fuck it era of, uh, of DC had, began officially it. with the Joker. <laughs> I welcome it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're not building some long, huge mythology. It's like, I don't know, Super Pets? How about that? <laughs> yeah, it's not like they saw, um, you know, I used to say something like after uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, where, like DC was now developing Protectors of the Universe. Or, like, yeah, right, uh, right. Captain transmorphers. It's all transmorphers. It's all transmorphers, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's enough of that. We uh, Right on time, we're with our guest. Yeah, look at this. Uh, I, I have, uh, well, uh, we set up at the top of the show that there were, we were going to talk Hawkeye today anyway, and as I was writing down what we could talk about, a controversy came over the internet. And Paul, you and I don't understand the internet, but you know who does understand the internet and who can explain it to us? That's Lon Harris. I have a gentlemen. graphic already. Debut <laughs> appearance, and I already have it? a graphic. Have I so sense. don't know the internet, and I just overall think it's dumb. I will need. I may need it explained it frequently, so it you will dumb. have to have you back. It's better best to create a graphic now. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand. A recurring segment in the making. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for coming on short notice because I was following. I was following your Twitter feed last night, and I love your Twitter feed, Lon. Oh. It's just. Right. Uh, it's it's just wonderful. It's like you're always speaking from my heart as well, and so I'm like, well, Lon's already said it. I often find out what I find out about something that's happening. <laughs> I let it, you know what you think before you exactly. think. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Appreciate. So, but I thought it would be oh. fun here rather than me explain what Lon Harris had to say about the Hawkeye. <laughs> Let's bring Lon on. And Lon, I want you to explain to Paul. Paul has not gone on the internet and found out that there is some controversy. Ah, yes. Uh, this is great. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Paul does not know what the controversy is about Hawkeye. And I, I learned it from this link. And let's be honest, specious. I mean, as with any right. link on the internet, it's like, is there a controversy? Is there know. a controversy? Although, because uh, I did write, I wrote about it, and it got picked up. A few big people with big audiences retweeted it. So it ended up getting some attention. And I did. There is a controversy because I heard back specifically from at least 30 people, I would say at this point, wow. who are mad. Or, or at least some level on the spectrum of disappointed okay. to violently angry. They're somewhere on on that that spectrum. Well, I'm glad you could clear that up, too, because sometimes when I see a controversy on the Internet, I'm like, do you mean a guy didn't like it? Right. Like, I mean, because now we have access to what everyone thinks, which God never intended. This is the problem with Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've strayed so far from his life now. But, you, but you're saying this is legit. <laughs> Uh, that yeah i mean a lot of the time right it's like somebody's got to get 300 words out of something and they're like three tweets equals a controversy Uh, and that's what i thought (laughs) and that's what i thought this might be but no like having put it out there that me saying i liked this post credit scene that's what it just to give us a little bit more narrow uh, all of the attention was about the post credit sequence at the final episode so if you haven't seen it spoiler alert right now uh you know, Hawkeye, the, the, the post credit sequence, we come back and we see the full performance from Rogers, the musical of the song. Uh, I could do this. I could do this all day. I could do Marvel's, this all day. Marvel's gift to us. Oh. I, right. And it was, Their Christmas had, card. 
Mark Shaman, who's like has actually written songs for right. the stage and screen, wrote this. Oh my this. god! He's and got it's amazing. Got, got his face on camera too. There. It's got real Broadway performers. And I mean, this is a, they put together a pretty realistic approximation of if there was a cheesy Broadway show in MCU, in universe about the Avengers, right. this is probably what it would sort of be like. And it from Disney too, I thought it's like a clever, cause this is the kind of stuff that they do. I mean, obviously Spider-Man right. turn off the dark. A lot of people were talking about which was not disney but you know like they also have all of their shows inspired the lion by their king movies. and frozen exactly and yeah. so you know i, I it, it was obviously supposed to be sort of a play on that stuff and i thought it was a lot of fun um it obviously but, is but go on it right. is a lot of fun <laughs> well I, so based on what i was hearing back there were like sort of a few categories uh like i think the predictable one is like not everybody who's into marvel is into musical theater and broadway some people are just like that's lame I don't want to see a song. I want to see something that's not a song because I don't like Broadway musicals. And like, fair enough. Okay, I, I get that that may be, I don't agree, but that may be some people's right. taste. But, but there were a lot of people where, I'm sorry, go ahead. If that's what you like. That's right. not controversy, but go ahead. That's yeah. not a controversy. <laughs> but there, there was, a, there was a, a large contingent of people that just feel like, well, at this point, Marvel has sort of trained us to expect that there's a post credit sequence that's going to, tease us or give us a little flavor of something that's yet to come and they, this doesn't do that this is just a fun aside instead of being a like oh and it, like literally i i made the joke in the tweet that like they wanted it to pan to the audience and moon knight is there <laughs> and moon knight's there that not was... a joke real like that people are really saying that oh that they're disappointed God. that it didn't pan away from the audience like in the audience some character who we know is coming up like oh charlie cox's daredevil is there something some. Stuff we already know is coming up anyway, which is what's so funny about this. That, to me, that's what reading about this made me feel really depressed. Not because I need everybody to love the Hawkeye musical number. I mean, I thought it was fun, but I like taste may differ. But it's just I feel like we're in this place now where it's not even about enjoying the thing you're watching. It's just about getting that that tasty nugget of what's next. And like we're just in this perpetual cycle where we can't even have the thing that we like and enjoy it for 10 friggin' minutes immediately the conversation is like okay that's done what's next what's what's the next thing right i'm hitting the i'm hitting the lever i need another pellet you know but, like it's because what's been overlooked here is that they made a hawkeye tv show I, yeah. as a child who read hawkeye i loved hawkeye i collected every west coast avengers because hawkeye was the leader i like captain america <laughs> wow, as well like the one guy like the, oh. the, the hawkeye DVD. Well, and, and you know who ultimately uh, joined the West Coast Adventures was Moon Knight, and then I was way in. Ah, yeah. But uh, but you know they made a Hawkeye TV show, and I swear I must be so annoying to watch this stuff with because I sat there the entire time, and my only response the entire time was like, "They made a Hawkeye TV show. They right, made yeah. a Hawkeye TV show." Yeah, and I, it just, it's just so weird to me that you got six episodes of a Hawkeye show. You never thought Kingpin is there? Kingpin, and it's, like, it's, oh, so and, it's and it's interacting with the whole universe. And Black, he's fighting a Black Widow in the tracksuit. I mean, you get all this like at that third episode i thought was just incredible like one incredible. of the coolest action sequences we've seen in like maybe in the mm. mcu this year yeah. that, like truck chase with the trick at where you saw the trick oh. arrows for the first time yeah and, like, i just feel like we don't even get a day of everybody to be like excited about that stuff and uh, before it's already like but what does this mean for 2024 and it's like you might be dead guys like <laughs> We might be yeah. enjoy your Marvel today because who knows? <laughs> we're two variants away from no more TV shows ever. So, and it's almost as if Marvel got ahead of this controversy by saying, Okay, look, if you don't like that, there's a what's coming next, there's not a what's coming next at the end of Hawkeye, watch Spider Man. We give you a full trailer. So, full yeah. relax. Trailer. <laughs> and it's a trailer, and that's after the tease of what's coming I, up. Yeah. Like, there's two teases at right. the end of Spider Man. And, like, that, it's just, yeah. And there's so, you just showed that graphic before I came on of, like, the eight shows they're already working on. It's like, there's so much. It's a, yeah. it's, you couldn't, it's hard to even, as somebody whose job is to watch all of this, it's hard to even watch it all. And and like I just it's so weird to me that we're still stuck in this world of like oh but I wanted to get the Ms where's Ms Marvel and it's like she's coming she'll she'll be here soon I have to kill all of you 
<laughs> and then there's, uh, and then there's yeah. Eternals, who gives you two teases in the post credit sequence that aren't pro- projects we know are coming. We've right. got Eros, right? And then the uh, Black Knight, right? Is that his name? Oh, no. Well, well Black yeah. Knight, and then that's that's Blade's voice that we Correct. Yes. No, he's coming. But bl- for right. a guy like me who uh, doesn't know Black Knight, hasn't seen there's any Black Knight TV Star show on the horizon. Star Fox, right. correct. Um, so we get Star Fox and Black Knight. And that was new to me. I'm like, I don't know what this is. I'm excited to find yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, and that's what that's classic. what it's always was to me too. Like, I never used to leave like Phase One because I was not a Marvel comics reader growing up. I was like, you know, I read some, but I was not like a devotee. So I used to uh, bug Heckner Navarro, who used to go to see all these screenings that I was in, <laughs> uh-huh. and afterwards I would just run up to him in the lobby and be like, all right, who is that guy? Like, hey, right. Uh, <laughs> I do that. Who <laughs> Like uh, Guardians Two, when they when they're the they're the Adam Strange tease where they're like we're building the perfect human, and then you just see I was like Hector, what who's that supposed to be? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I none of this means anything. To me. And they do plenty of that, and it's a thing they invented. First right. of all, I, I I hate when people get so proprietary about something that's been gifted to them or whatever. It's like that's the wrong color Camaro. Thank you for the car. It's like, what are you? Huh? Yeah, I, and it's like it's a post credit it's it's a it's a bonus no matter what it is it's not even really like you got the show already like you already got your thing it showed the playbill and mephisto is the right there <laughs> yeah well i mean right that that was what we were thinking in the post wandavision where we didn't get to enjoy wandavision week to week because the only discussion was is is this a clue is this mephisto is mephisto next who's next is the villain mephisto and it's like there's a show. Like, just enjoy the show that's on right now yeah, that you're yeah. missing. People thought uh, Mephisto was Doctor Strange in yeah. Far From Home. Or, I'm sorry, uh, No Way Home. Well, really I gonna... also, to be honest, I also kind of thought that Doc, Doctor Strange just wasn't really... I don't feel like Benedict Cumberbatch has done the same performance in any two <laughs> movies. I mean, like, every new project, he's like, what's going on with Stephen Strange this time? And it's a totally different personality. <laughs> so I, I was like, he's not acting like himself. I bet this is another... I thought it might be, uh, you know, like some... Like, maybe not Mephisto, but some kind of magic or some kind of, like... Scroll. Is but... Mysterio still around yeah. with his Ooh. drones? Is but because I situation? trust Marvel 100%, I would not be shocked if somehow that's addressed in this oh, I, next standalone Strange movie. I still think it's coming in the Strange movie because yeah. we know we have multiple Doctor Stranges in the next movie. So I think we still might get a reveal that this Strange that we thought was like Strange Prime, like our Doctor Strange, has actually been an imposter. Ah, uh, and that's like, possible. Going yeah. back. Well, they messed up. Anything's possible because the multiverse <laughs> now is like so... It's like it, the, there's Loki had a version of it and WandaVision had a version of it. And like we're, we're like there's too many problems with the multiverse now. But everything is according to a plan with Marvel. So anything like that where you go, man, I don't know. They're getting way out on a limb here. They're going to bring it back within a year or okay. two. They'll bring it all the way back around. You'll be like, well, that was perfectly satisfying according to my initial criticisms. It definitely <laughs> can't all wrap up until the next Ant-Man because that's when Kang is the bad guy. And we know oh, he's connected because of the dang. Loki thing. So I mean, these are got famous. at least a year plus to play this out for us. <laughs> and and think about how obscure we're talking. I mean, what do you want? What do you want to hear at the end of Hawkeye? That Daredevil's in universe? Like we know, we know. <laughs> Kingpin's like, there. I, should, they <laughs> want it. You know, like it pans over and like Luke Cage is there, and he's like, Stand "Hi, there. I'm Luke." <laughs> like that's what they wanted. They wanted something. <laughs> that they could go, you know, like a little, little, you know, whoop. I didn't know that was yeah. happening. They wanted that, that pop instead of something fun and creative that expands the world of the thing you just watched They, you know, they wanted like the, the what's the next thing? Yeah. Rogers. Hi, I'm Luke Cage. Hi, I'm Luke like, Cage. Yeah, it would have literally just been, yeah, like, you know. I literally. certainly enjoyed that show. <laughs> yeah, Luke, Luke Cage and Me. Man, like, they Luke were very good. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, Rogers the Musical is my jam. I thought that was just I the because right. it, I like it's that perfect. It, it, That's what's weird about this controversy. It's yeah. perfect. What I like they did. that it existed purely on its own turn. It, it wasn't paying anything off. It wasn't right. referencing any. It was just this thing Fun. they did to make it feel like yeah, there's an MCU New York, and in that MCU New York, there's a Broadway, and they do their own cheesy shows. And here's one of them. I'm only like I'm such a sucker for that. Like I feel like post blip, I've wanted a lot more of like the ground level like what has this been like for the everyday person in the marvel universe there was that that 
that Marvel's comic, that the graphic novel thing that that I, that I did read about the it's like a f- photo journalist in the Marvel yeah. universe. Yeah, uh, and like I I'd like a thing like that. Like how, imagine you just like we we got a little bit of taste of it in Hawkeye when Yelena we saw what like the blip was like from her point of view, where she like disappeared and then yeah. reappeared immediately, and it was five years later. Like that was amazing. No, I love stuff like that's to my get a real point stuff. of view. Is, or or even the opening of Hawkeye, where it's like the Battle of New York, but from the perspective of just a girl in her apartment who's watching it play out out her window, like that makes the universe feel yeah. bigger and more lived in in a real, like, tangible way. Hey, you know, you mentioned that, and that's what that's one of my favorite comics. My two favorite comics of all time are Kingdom Come, uh, mm-hmm. Alex Ross and uh, yeah. and Mark Wade, and Marvel's Alex Ross and Kurt Busiek. Right. And, and uh, there is a, a great reference in Avengers, and I don't think a lot of people know this. The woman that looks out the the uh, diner, who is in the musical, right, which is yeah. so funny. There's that one shot, and there's a scene that was cut where she meets Captain America early on in that movie, but it, it cuts to her looking out that window. That is like a one for one of looking up at the destruction, like the uh, uh, Alex Ross. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and she is in the musical, the waitress. Right. Yes. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> I mean, great. And like, yeah, it's thick. it's that stuff is cool, and and it's the kind of stuff that comic books do. Also, like, you'll get a a few panels where you cut away to like another perspective on the action you just saw. Like, that's a thing art oh, can do that. that isn't as easy for movies to do all the time, but. I don't know. Yeah, for Kate to see Hawkeye saving the city from, and that that became her influence and everything. Right. Man, it's just like ah, oh, it's so good. And it's, it's just so- cool to see them even like imagine a part of that battle that we never saw. Like it just your whole envision of that battle is like, oh yeah, there was that whole time where we're watching. You know, we were watching what Black Widow was doing during that moment, and here's what yeah. Hawkeye was doing. And yeah, I, 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 it's weird for me that fans aren't into that stuff because to me, that's the stuff. That's the meat of it. Well. Here's the More thing. so than, oh, this guy's going to be in it next year. It's like, well, I'll see it next year when that guy's in it. And hopefully well, it'll be good. Here's the thing. Uh, only a few people, uh, again, mankind is not meant to hear the thoughts of everybody. So that is what's wrong <laughs> right. with Twitter. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, all of those quiet masses are very satisfied with all of that stuff. Oh, you sure. know, yes, yes. it's, uh, yeah, no, it's nobody. A, it's always a, and it's always a smaller percentage of the whole than you think. Like, right. they're very, like, people on, on Twitter are very, they, they, they sound a lot louder than they are in number. Like I, uh, yeah, there was a while where I was just making a lot of jokes about the Snyder cut. Cause like, Hey, I am a movie themed joke maker and how do you <laughs> yeah. not make a joke about the Snyder cut. It's there getting, to be joked about. <laughs> and I was getting in a day. I got a lot of negative feedback from big Snyder cut fans. And if you're watching guys, I'm, I'm sorry, no hard feelings, but, um, after I started sort of muting some of the more, you know, hostile reactions, I realized it didn't really take that long. Like most of the really hostile people you could mute quickly. It's there's not that many of them. They're, right. they're active is all. Yeah. They're right. Uh-huh. They're 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 puffing themselves out to make them seem bigger and then, and, you know. And what you don't thing. hear and which happens 100%. And this will happen with this. This will happen with all the other 30-second controversies. Uh, Monday at 3 p.m. controversies, I think we could d- diminish them. You know, like, they're, they're gone by the end of the week. Like, nobody's going to, oh, yeah. you know, nobody's going to care about this, you know, by the end of this week, you know? Who gives a shit? But, uh, yeah. but what, what are the, uh, uh, what, one of the things, like with Star Wars, right? So uh, people come out, Force Awakens, uh, there's all this blah, 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 controversy. The Last Jedi, blah, 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 controversy. But by the time those people come around to find some reason to hate Rise of Skywalker, they've made their peace with Force Awakens and Last Jedi. They now like that movie. They now like those movies. So, But you never hear that the people go, hey, early on, I said The Last Jedi sucked. I was wrong. But that's what right. happens because I think yeah. everybody and ultimately and when Rise of Skywalker came out, I go, guys, why don't you cut out the middleman and just like this movie? Because you're going to like it in five years. Yeah, yeah. Especially I, Marvel, which is thick, you know, so you go back and watch the old movies. And you go, oh, I now I like that. You know, I, I do think social media because what one thing like sharing your opinion on Twitter and Facebook and all this, like it, it makes you feel like you're a brand and that you need to have like brand consistency, right. like subconsciously. I got to say people actually think of themselves that way i'd say like it just once you start putting all of your thoughts out there in public you then feel like well i have to stand by them now i have to defend my thoughts i can't i don't want to be a hypocrite you know and right. so we like don't change our foolish consistency anymore. we're just like hawkeye is good and then if somebody is like i didn't like hawkeye that much i'm like oh no i already staked my claim behind hawkeye is good now i have to 
yell at you until you agree. And it's like, no, you're, <laughs> nobody cares. Like nobody's checking receipts on this stuff. You could change your mind like that. And everybody would be like, oh, I guess he likes it. I feel bad for the Snyder Cut guys because they, they don't they don't watch that movie every day. I know they don't. Because <laughs> because yeah. have to, it takes it's at least a two day viewing. <laughs> but I mean, even the before when they were like, "Oh, this is you know, release the Snyder cut." Even that, even at that time, the people who are saying release the Snyder cut, they're not watching Justice League every day because you can't because it's not watchable every day. It's just not. It's not Star Wars. It's not Hawkeye. You know, it's it's not good. <laughs> I mean, those, those guys love it. Those guys love it. So, yeah. you know, I'm sure they, uh, there are there are people out there who are watching that four-hour Justice League every day. I'm sure of it. Well, I mean, it, was a, it was a remarkable improvement. And I'm happy to have any superhero movies. I'm just, I superhero movies, you know, we had so few when I was a kid and so few good ones for many years yeah. that, like, now I'm just like, it's, this is all I've ever, what is happening right now that people are complaining about and saying, like, ah, is it overload because you release eight movies of one genre a year? Although this year looks like about 20. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, that uh, I'm just like, I, I couldn't be happier because back when I was a kid, you got one and it's Superman yeah. 4, and that's it. Yeah, that's all you get. It's interesting that it, it's always like the genre gets held accountable for things that are not the <laughs> genre's fault. Like, I remember in the 90s, Good everybody point, was very down on disaster movies because that was the big trend. And too so many of time, them. Like, Two a year. Twister <laughs> came out. They would be like, oh, again? No, they all, that's all they want to do is computer-generated <laughs> storms and destroy the city. And like it feels really weird now because that's not a hated genre anymore because, you know, who, who, they get excited when Moonfall is coming out now because it's right. one a year. But, um, <laughs> but it's, it was obviously never that genre's fault. It was just like, look, a big one came out. Armageddon was a huge hit. People mm -hmm. wanted to capitalize on Independence Day. And, like, that's how it happened. And I think that's happening now. Like, there are trends that are, like, a concern. Like, the idea that they're, we're narrowing the, num the kinds of movies you can go see in a theater, which is a shame. And I think a lot of us would like... I'd love to still be able to go see stuff that's not a superhero movie in the theater. And it's becoming harder to not impossible, harder, but that's yeah. not the fault of superhero movies like that. that they, they're just happen to be the, the, you know, in vogue genre while these other trends are happening. It's right. not like Spider-Man did it and it's his fault. And it's, and, and the people that are saying, oh, why don't they put out, uh, why, there's too many superhero movies. Those people are also not going out to see Belfast right now. So right. shut up. <laughs> As somebody who did go to the theater to see Belfast, yeah, those people should shut up. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> House of Gucci was too long, and my mom and I needed something to watch, so Belfast. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think, right, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it, I, those are the movies that get made and that get put in all the screens because those are the movies that people are paying to go see in the theater. And I, I, well, I don't think yeah. that there's... It's not a nefarious conspiracy. It's just no. numbers. It's just numbers on a well, list. There, has there been a response, or God, I hope not, an apology from Marvel or any sort of a response to the loud people on uh, Twitter who... Unfortunately. The actual thing I was responding to was Mark Shaman being interviewed, yeah. and he's like, it's a shame. Like, I put all... We Mark did all Shaman this work had to apologize. We did all this work, and we what? put all this effort into it. And, uh, well, I don't know. He wasn't like, I'm sorry. But well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I wrote a great thing. We got to make <laughs> him feel bad for creating this awesome. Right? Yeah. Come they on. Did. They, did. they made him feel bad because he was yeah. like, I'm disappointed that there's this backlash to it because we thought it was really fun, and we had a good time putting it together. You, you just you do. You feel like the guy wrote Hairspray. Like, come on. What are you doing? Yeah, he had Book of Mormon. I mean. Yeah. Like, he's great. Oh, come yeah. On. He probably it's, had it's his hand good. in it with the. Wrote the, the score yeah, to uh, Adam's Family. Which and is you can tell movie. when you're watching it that these are, this is real broad. Like, it feels like one of those plays. Like, for a different thing, I was watching clips the other night from that Shrek musical. With uh, Brian Darcy James? With Brian Darcy James. But I, did, I, I did not realize that was him. I, I was like, oh, the guy from Spotlight? What's he? Right. No, no, no. Uh, I, I had Friend no of the show. It was Shrek. And I, I, not, not to knock the Shrek musical. I'm sure there are fans of it out there. But it's so much like this. It was like immediately like, oh, that's exactly the kind of show that they're making. That That's the thing. That's the thing about people saying that there was something dissatisfying about the, the post credits on Hawkeye is it's actually perfect. What they yeah. did was perfect. They even put Merry Christmas from Marvel. Here's our Christmas card. 
Like, yeah. it, they put Merry Christmas from Marvel before showing you the whole thing, which I, people would have requested anyway. If it just yeah. from the clips, people would be like, oh, I want to see that whole thing. You they know what I mean? That's just it's people, giving the audience that, what they want. When that pilot episode came out with the with them watching it, yeah. people were like, oh, my God, I want to see a whole musical of this. And then they gave them one. Yeah, but I, like, want, but I want a post credit sequence that shows me something that's new and coming up in the future. <laughs> and then separately from that, I want the entire Rogers right. and musical that's, that's because I get everything I want because I'm a millennial Gen Z fuckface. Done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that. Uh, yeah. Did I, wrap I think it up? Did I wrap it up for us. I think, I think you did. did. I think that's the moral of the story right there. I, th I think another good way to wrap this up is to watch a clip from Hawkeye so I could just go, they made a Hawkeye TV show. Hawkeye show. And I pulled it. Look at this. Watch this. Watch what I'm about to show you. This exists in our lifetime. Hawkeye! In a costume! Right next to Kate Bishop! In a costume! Oh! And look at that final shot. The hero moments that Marvel coughs up just since 2000. I mean, there are plenty of them in the first four movies, but starting in Avengers, I mean, Whedon just fed us the hero shots. Like, that hero shot. At an alarming so level, and they've just maintained that ever since. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, I love that he goes to a plaque in Hawkeye, and it says, this is where the Avengers first assembled. And you're like, they've they've taken that moment that we all love, the big circular right, shot, and they put a yeah. plaque up about it, you know? Yeah, right. And that's, and that's the exact kind of stuff, like that <laughs> plaque existing. Gen oh, yeah, I like, I like Gen Z fuck face. It's good. Got a good, good power set. You serious, Clark? <laughs> uh, I, that's, I like that. that. Like That plaque is another example of it's just these little world building details that give it inner life, that make it feel like a real place instead of just, you know, like the setting of all of these crazy movies. And, and one last thing Swordsman. Mm. <laughs> the character of Swordsman. Uh, from a, a, an absolutely absurd superhero that I loved because he showed up in all the comics yeah, I read. Not a guy I was familiar with before before this. Well, here's here's the thing. He, he was I, just Lalo from Better Call Saul. That was oh, that, oh okay. He's got a name that guy. I knew him from somewhere. He's yeah, well, and they, he's on he's on Better Call Saul. Well, I know that. No, I know yeah. that. I, that that I mean that show is amazing. But yeah. I didn't know his character in Hawkeye had a name Swordsman eventually. Right. No, he I didn't mean, like it. that was a, I picked that up from other screen junkies people while the show well, was up. Cool. They were like, oh, that guy's supposed to be Swordsman. I was like, I'm going to take your word on it that there's a character named Swordsman. <laughs> I'll take more of that. Swordsman uh, frequently uh, teamed up with Batrock the Leaper, who made an appearance oh, in, in the uh, Captain America film. Captain and America. And he's in uh, Captain America Falcon and Winter Soldier. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Batrock the Leaper. You know, oh, you and the, the, the Batrock the Leaper. Leaps. He leaps in The people. French guy who leaps. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> these are in. yeah, totally absurd Marvel characters <laughs> that are making it into these things. Yeah, and like that's why not, right? Like it's that's the, the those are the little the little details that make it fun. Well, and also as a huge Marvel kid, you know, read all the Marvel comic books, swordsman would show up in all kinds of stuff. He fought Iron Man, he fought, you know, all these people. Really? And he fought Iron with just a sword? That doesn't seem like a good match. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything. You think he's just good with the sword, much like Batrock really the Leaper good. is great at leaping. He's good at leaping. But uh, watching that character, he develops and he has this obsession with swords. And finally, watching episode the last episode last night, um, I was like, "Oh, he's got to be a Marvel character. I got to look him up." And, and so, because I, I, you know, you can tell when Marvel's treating a a legacy character, in the, you're like, "He's a little. He's forcing the sword a little bit. He's got, you know." Yeah. And so I looked it up, and I, when I found out he was the swordsman, as a kid who had read swordsman comics, I was like, "Oh my god, this is the greatest." <laughs> I feel like uh, I, when the Hawkeye first started, like the first few episodes, I thought this was definitely a like, this is a goodbye to Clint Barton. And we're, we're like, Kate, by the end of the show, Clint Barton is riding off into the sunset back to the farm and Kate Bishop is Hawkeye. Like that was what I thought going in. But yeah. then by the end, especially with the Laura and the shield watch and all that stuff now, I, I feel like, no, I feel like this is just now there's just two Hawkeyes, which is weird. Yeah. yeah. They're just going to have two Hawk, two, two characters, both named Hawkeye. Now? Man, I love the moment. And it's just like, it's just such good storytelling. I love that moment when, you know, Hawkeye's putting it to her before they start building the arrows, which they built. And the idea of like how Marvel is able to hold off. The ultimate example, of course, is saying Avengers Assemble. Right. Yeah. They held that off for how many movies? 22 movies? Yeah, like a, a whole lot. <laughs> 
I mean, and this sort of way you could tell they decided we're not doing this until the big finale when they're all yeah there. right. But that that's just and and boy what a, what a way to save it for because DC would have said that ten minutes into the first Captain oh, yeah, America movie no, right? DC, <laughs> no, really. And I I say this as somebody who liked DC comics way more growing up. Like Batman, yeah. that eighty nine Batman movie was what got me into this whole world. Yeah. And, sure. and so I was just a hardcore Batman reader growing yeah. up. And then, you know, that spread to sort of more DC. There's, they have no, they just, they just don't have the, like the, the diligence and the, the, the patience to like orchestrate something like this. They just, they want their candy right away. Like that's always like, all right, we've done a movie and a half. Yeah. Bring in dark side. It's like, can't bring dark side <laughs> we've done a movie and a half. Bring in dark side. That's literally what they did. It's like, you can't, you can't, you can't do dark side yet. I'm sorry. I know you want your delicious candy, but it's yeah. not time yet. Well, we finally got a Superman movie off the ground. Should we kill him? That's literally. Like, you know, no, that's the end. I'm jumping to the end. There's a lot of stuff in the middle. We've never had a Brainiac movie. It's like the no, most, I know. most famous Superman villain. Right. Right, it's always Lex Luthor. Just give always me another Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor. It's always Lex Luthor. It's always Lex Luthor. He's always got like a real estate scheme. It's like he's fighting Superman. <laughs> will they? And you know what's, yeah. Will they bypass the chance to show Bruce Wayne's parents dying in the new Batman movie? Oh, you mean is it going to be Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne's parents dying? Again? No, no, I just mean in the new one with Robert Pattinson. It's a Batman movie. We oh. have to see yeah. based no, Rob, on our, our Pats. We absolutely see those parents in Crime Alley. N- yeah. No doubt in I mean, my mind. They made a Joker movie and showed us Batman's parents dying. Yeah. Like they, no, they just can't, can't they stop showing resist. us Batman's parents dying. <laughs> they absolutely cannot resist. I love how the Joker movie. It's 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 funny. I, I think they won't because they've taken a lot of shit for that. <laughs> how many times they've shown they uh, had before can... Joker and they still did it. That's almost the biggest trick the Joker pulled was that, like, in the whole things of Batman origin story, like, the whole movie's such a middle finger. I'm like, that felt like the final middle finger of, like, and guess what? You've been watching a Batman origin story. I'm out! <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, super. I mean, Spider Man came into the MCU and they knew what to do. They said, all right, Uncle Ben's died enough. Let's just have him be Spider Man. Yeah. I love that. That's the best thing yeah. that they decided to do, I think. And yeah, like that that's what I would say. And and I do like the idea that the patents in one, it's he's starting in like year two, so we don't have to right. do any of the training or what like he's already yeah, like Tim Burton. He's already <laughs> Batman. He's got the suit, he's got the a, a version of the car or whatever. Um but yeah, I, I there's definitely he's gonna get knocked out or something and have a vision of mom and dad <laughs> it's just funny because that means there's like 20 different movie scenes where we have to believe that this like elegant wealthy couple is like let's just take a jaunt down crime alley in the middle of the night this, <laughs> i'm sure there are cabs down that way you know that alley named after alexander <laughs> crime the guy yeah, that invented like, crime like, in gotham crime alley sounds promising <laughs> i know we're on a major gotham thoroughfare and that way is just smokestacks and uh, warehouses but uh, let's head over there i'm sure something promising well That's awesome. Lon, you've explained the internet yes oh wow have. yeah that was thorough <laughs> Well, thank you for coming on, Lon. This is this is uh, this is so was so perfect. Oh, great to talk movies with you. I mean, you should come back on and we'll talk about uh, other other developments that are non controversial. Yeah, I got nothing going on. So, but happen on the internet. They have to happen on the internet. Right. That had to happen. Now, uh, our show will wrap sometime before now in four thirty. But later on, your tape and go ahead and plug stuff, Lon. Oh, uh, just follow me on Twitter at L-O-N-S. That's the best place to keep up with everything I'm uh, working on. And then I do uh, a podcast as well with uh, Video Drew from the Schmodown, Garmin Shosia. So if you subscribe to her network, Content Candy, on any of the podcasting platforms, you will you will hear that every week. Okay. I'm starting to gather that because I subscribe and click the little bell thing, so I'm, I'm alerted. Right. But I keep missing Video Drew's new shows, and I and I add... So I'm assuming each show I have to go add the bell, because I haven't seen Garmin's shows I don't yet. think so. I think it's just content can... I'm not sure what okay. platform, though. It might change between platforms. I'm, I'm oh, usually on that Spotify. Might be... Okay, so that one's on Spotify? The, on Spotify, right, and it's all one feed. So you would just get all, all of the Drew content uh, together. <laughs> Uh yeah, oh, it, it's not video, so that's an audio podcast. Okay, well yes. I will su- I will subscribe to that because I've been on Video Drew's shows a couple times. And I keep hearing talking about Garmin shows. Yeah, I forgot you were on that, and so right. I haven't even you know as I try and follow whatever Drew's doing because it it's was originally going to be about David Lynch, which is the explanation of that title, but now it's just about whatever we. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was too much. That was too much of a commitment. 
That's cool. That's excellent. Well, good. Well, of course we'll follow you, Lon, and and please come back. Anytime. All right. And this has been... And let's not mess around. What do you say we get right into... What did you see this week? What did you see this week? And again, it's worth pointing out that's Adam Pascal, who uh, is a big Broadway guy from Rent and was one of the lead two New Yorkers who lead the Rogers the Musical song. And when he was in our garage appearing on an old podcast of ours, he recorded that. That's amazing. Cool. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he recorded it. He sang it and then I put it to music and started using it as the intro to this segment. (laughs) But, I mean, obviously the writing of the movie Rent is the subject of a movie that's, well, was in theaters. I don't know what's in theaters anymore, but um, tick, it's a tick, Netflix film, so tick, it's brief. Boom. Yeah. Oh, oh, big announcement. So I found out, the you know the Bay Theater? No, Bay Theater. Ooh, it opened in Pacific Palisades if you're in the SoCal area. Okay. Uh, the Bay Theater is a Netflix theater, and it's in Pacific oh. Palisades. They just show Netflix movies in the theater all day long. So currently they're showing The Lost Daughter, what? The Power of the Dog, Don't Look Up, Tick, Tick, Boom, all these movies that are on Netflix. If you want to see them bigger than your television, and yeah. I always do. Always. That's the place to go. And they are without trailers. It's just they're they're showing their movies on a big screen. It's pretty cool. I was uh, very excited awesome. to find out about it. I can't wait to get and check it out. Oh, my God. Yeah, because that's the most disappointing thing is like things are in theaters for a week. That's all you got. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I want to see all these things in the theater. So that's and the power fantastic. of the dog has such beautiful cinematography. It's, it's right. It's cinematic as hell, and so you need to check it out there. But uh, yeah, okay. No, that's you, again, fantastic. blinking, you miss it in theaters. So always go to the look at the Bay Theater for show times. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about something we both seen first? Because we were going to talk about the Matrix Resurrections last week, and we didn't get to it. But uh, we could chat now. You want? Uh, we could talk Matrix Resurrections. We, I think we've covered Hawkeye. Uh, yeah. And and how great is Lon Harris, by the way? God, I was just uh, it was so great. He said yes on short notice, and and man, he just comes out and kills it. So we got to have him back on. That's just that's so much fun. Oh, we don't create uh, a theme song and then not use it repeatedly. But uh, era that's uh, and a friend at Amazon. Says they have analytics to prove that week to week is proving more successful for talkability, and that's my belief. So I'm glad Amazon stats back that up. That, oh uh, yeah. yeah. Also, you know, uh, anticipation is is a good thing. It's like yeah. you know finding out how something plays out the next week. I love that. I mean, especially for a finale like Game of Thrones finale, Sopranos finale. Everybody was like, "We're yeah. on board this time to watch it." You know, collective is to talk about it the next day. And now people are watching finales whenever. I don't know. I mean, and the yeah, it's, and it's the difference bizarre. and the difference between a Hawkeye show, uh, you know, coming out one week at a time versus a Hawkeye show coming out all at once. Pretend the show came out January third. There now, all six are out. I mean, <laughs> uh, huh? <laughs> all right, so let's get to this because I uh, yeah, we saw it last week right before the show. I saw it uh, a couple days ago. I mean, we live in amazing times. Let me just say this, Paul. <laughs> we live in amazing times. I like keep that up so we can just uh, I like oh. keep talking about there. I like that. It's, it divides up the, uh, the the scene here a little bit. Yeah, but uh, so anybody tuning in knows what we're talking about. But uh, but I mean, we live in amazing times. They made another Matrix movie, and it's a good one. And it's uh, it, it 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 the Matrix Resurrections knows that there was three matrix movies and that we liked them and that they were a long time ago and that this is it. I mean, it's like, it takes all of the, I mean, ordinarily that's a license to annoy the shit out of me is I call those apology movies that are constantly like saying, okay, okay, but we're not this, but we're not this, we're not that, you know, this one just so thoroughly owned that. And I mean, down to using the phrase bullet time down to like saying like, oh, remember that big moment from the matrix. I mean that it's just, it somehow juggled a lot of balls, you know? Jane, you ignorant slut. <laughs> <laughs> I did not I have a good reaction it. to this one. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> it felt pretty inconsequential and 
more like the sequels than the original. And I was not a big fan of the sequels. And and going as meta as they did, actually, I got a little confused where I couldn't like enjoy it. Uh, so thoroughly, I'm like, wait, he's a game developer, so that's real? No, it's not real because the analyst is in charge. You find out, and just, I could, it's all. And then we get back into stuff we've seen before with the mem and pull him out of the the pod and uh, yeah. detach him, and all. So I, I got a little. Uh, I, I wasn't thoroughly enjoying myself. No, quite like you were, I guess. But um, I did like when the movie went full John Wick, though, and suddenly everybody's after them. Yeah, <laughs> including jumping out of windows to sacrifice themselves just to try and land on them and kill them. Um, but uh, yeah, that part was cool. But you uh, know, overall, I mean, the Mer- Merovingian shows up and does a brief bit of the stuff I never enjoyed him doing in the first place <laughs> in the second, third movies where they just talk too much. Um, yeah, I, I guess I didn't care enough about the analyst for me to really get a sense of, you know, well, that was rooting, big... rooting like uh, like I could for the you know, against the machines. In the first I mean, I think we made a joke early on. It's like, will the Merovingian return? You know, I mean, I there's know. even in our uh, trivia at the top of the show, like there's Everybody a whole Merovingian. Returns, I mean, they got Nairobi uh, returns, and then the uh, Priyanka, uh, what's her name? Her character shows up. The little kid oh, shows right. up. Back. Yeah, <laughs> they, oh, they brought I back thought... everybody except Hugo Weaving, who I read was doing stage work and had a conflict. I'm like, that's interesting. Okay, so he was going to come back. Uh, well, they brought back Smith, obviously, but he had a conflict. Yeah, I, I did have a problem with the casting of Smith because. It was extremely well directed. The appearance of Smith, or the revelation that that one guy is Smith, um, like like it was it was so perfectly directed. Except that that guy's just not Hugo Weaving. Like you know, like yeah. I was just like, oh man, they nailed everything except the casting of that guy. I know, and, that, and that guy's not Lawrence Fishburne, and I just kind of go, no, eh, maybe he's we not don't Lawrence do it. <laughs> that, that, well, that was I think that was how I came out. Uh, my main two criticisms is they should have stunt cast those. They should have cast some, I don't know, somebody that we super know to play one of these two parts to just go, oh wow, it's you know because yeah, I mean that that was upsetting because the Smith thing doesn't quite land, even though it's directed to land. It's directed really well. The reappearance of Smith or the revelation of that guy Smith. I'm now forgetting. I've only seen it once. But, um, but I mean, I just, I don't know, man. I thought it was, it was really cool. I mean, I'm going to see it again because I, I did really enjoy it. But I just, I'm, I was so happy. The whole, I smiled the whole time that we're back in the Matrix. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I, just, I wanted to, but didn't, didn't quite get there this time. And down to the brass against cover of the Rage Against the Machine song that ended the first one. At least in the sequels, they gave us a different Rage Against the Machine song. But the brass against, I think, is such a watered down version of Rage Against the Machine anyway. It was kind of emblematic of what was going on with this sequel for me. Oh, okay. Uh, the where they bring horn, the band that brings horns to Rage Against the Machine songs, and then the lead singer pisses on their audience in that in that viral video. Anyway. Oh, okay. uh, that I don't know. That I don't know. I mean, that's aside. I don't care about that. I don't do research to find out if I should hate some shit. But uh, yeah, in terms of what that, <laughs> I just watch the movies. Matters to the movie is nothing. But uh, I see. So you're saying. Went, eh. So you're saying. Towel. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going. VHS. <laughs> and I think America is here, somewhere in between us. So uh, that's yeah. All right. So that's uh. I mean, but I just I can't believe we got a Matrix uh, sequel, and that it has everybody but Hugo Weaving and Lawrence Fishburne in it. Yeah. You know? And I, I think I mentioned I, despite not liking the sequels, they put enough time between them and this one for me to go. I'm excited again. I want to see if we can get back in there, and mix it up. But again, it didn't quite work. And and I could now talk about uh, other things I've seen, but I'm dying to know what went on with you while you were traveling. You went back Midwest and spent some time in the plane. And the hint, the hint you gave me on uh, in a text <laughs> that there was some interesting shit going on in your uh, all right on so, your plane viewing. I want to hear about it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't get to prepare the whole segment because oh, oh well, okay, I'll, I'll go through it. First of all, are you talking about the guy that annoyed me, the anti-vax? Oh, I don't think I heard anything about oh, that. Oh, okay. You were just talking about the movies the you've movies. never heard of and okay. the movies that you uh, yeah, saw. That well, you let, me just, let me just summarize the guy that sat next to me and his entire okay. family that sat behind me and kicked my chair the entire time. Uh, you know, I, I, is it ever surprising when someone turns out to be an anti-vaxxer? No. <laughs> because an entire way walking down the gangway to the plane, first of all, social distancing is not new. 
don't get in my face 10 years ago also. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But now the people that are flaunting the rules are now breaking basic societal rules, such as being real close to me when I'm trying to walk down the, the get. We're all on the line, right? Fine. None of us are. We're all ignoring the six feet thing that's now so two years old. But don't get. I, mean, I don't want to feel your dick in my ass. OK, <laughs> don't be that close to me. And this guy would not get away from behind me. And so I would I would step forward and I don't like it on a covid thing as well. So I'm, I'm stepping forward. And every time this guy takes I take one step forward, he takes a step and a half forward. I'm like, what are you doing? And and so I do this kind of thing where I, I, I put one foot forward and then I lean back on my other one so that I, now I'm starting to push it against him to like say, like, get the hint, don't step all the way up each time I move forward. Well, it turns out this guy was sitting next to me. He was kicking my heels too. That's how close he was walking behind me in the gangway. We're all taking one step at a time. None of us are walking. And he's giving me the flat tire. And I'm like, what are you doing? Turns out that guy's sitting next to me. He's an anti-vaxxer. He starts complaining about all the masks and all this sort of stuff. And, and I'm just like, uh, anyway. But, it's even worse than that, though. It's like it's like a, a pandemic denier, which is even worse than like an anti-vaxxer, you know? The they're, point they're, is... They're not always mutually together. Uh, yeah. yeah. But the, but the, the the fact is, this guy causes problems all day long. I can tell. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Like this is some rebellion for this guy. To, like I'm going to get close to him. I'm like, don't do that. Ten years ago, also, <laughs> pre pandemic. But well, uh, like a, a great Bill Maher line. He said, uh, "I'm not saying all Republicans are racist, but if you meet a racist." probably republican so it's right I, <laughs> so hey. that it's like hey the, you know i know that not all uh uh anti-vaxxers are assholes but if you meet an asshole yeah yeah if somebody's causing that the, whether that's they anti-vax just gave someone who was going to be a dick in that department store anyway yeah a cause. A reason to be flaunty about it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, but let's get to the movies thing. So I'm yeah. scrolling on the movies here. I'm, I'm and, glad you could concentrate on a movie. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I mean, the guy, you know, luckily that was that was the end of it, with the exception of his terrible kids who kicked my chair the entire time. But uh, but I was like, okay, and cried the entire time. Of course they did. Of course they did. <laughs> but um, but that's that's all fine, because uh, there were so many movies to choose. I was on a Delta flight. I love when he, yeah, the flight can. Well, this flight could have been shorter, but ordinarily I'm like, I've got everything to watch. And I'm always behind on movies. Paul, you and I love movies. We're always behind on movies. Therefore, uh, you just can't see all these movies. So yeah. uh, I am, I am looking, so I'm looking through the, 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 the new releases in the thing. Did and I come across La La Land. I did not watch La La Land. Oh, that's right. That was your play. Anyway. Oh, so, so Paul, I guess this would be a good good time for the audience to figure out that you and I have different tastes. You took a plane trip and watched La La Land. Yeah. I watched this. <laughs> and by the way, are, are, are Americans laying down on their posters or what? Look at that. I mean, I just, I want... Uh, can, everything can the, that happens in the movie is happening on the poster. Everything that happens in the movie. I mean, out? You've seen it. Did they leave anything out? No, I think it's all there. Let's see. He's got the lollipop. Is it the balloon? Do you see a balloon? Yep, I, I see balloons. Yep, there's every time. Yeah, okay. So, oh, I see the crane even. There's a hand with a grenade. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's everything that happens in this movie. This movie is, so I'm, I'm looking at, I'm scrolling through the movies and I come across this. And I'm like, oh, what in the world is this? This looks totally interesting. And as an old Hong Kong action fan, I'm like, uh, I see guns. I see a crazy anime poster. I'm like, this looks really intriguing. However, there's 50 other movies to watch on here, so I'm scrolling through everything. But as the plane is about to take off, I get you know tweet alerts from our friends that uh, that that tweet about movies, and I see pops up from William Bibiani, it, it, all caps. Americans do not make action movies this this way, th th this this great. This is awesome. And I'm like, geez, what action movie? You know, that, that Bibiani's freaking out about an action movie. I got to see what action movie this is. What action movie is he talking about? This one. <laughs> <laughs> and I brought a clip. This movie is called Fable, the Killer Who Doesn't Kill, or the Fable, fa the, the 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 Fable, the Killer Who Doesn't Kill. There's a yeah, translation so problem because I saw, huh? 
In our text, that's what you called it, I think. The, yeah, I think it's called uh, Fable, the Killer Doesn't Kill. That's what yeah. Bibi and I was talking about. So I'm like, all right, that's what I'm watching on this plane. So I, the clip that he was talking about, I, I have to, I, br- I put it in here. You got to see this action sequence. This is the one that Bibi and I was talking about. And this just, this just thrilled me so much. And you're going to love this as a Shang-Chi fan. Ooh, scaffolding fight. Yeah, scaffolding fight. Yeah. Killer doesn't kill, just lets gravity do the work. <laughs> oh no, they're all on strings, I see. Because, yeah, his gun fires uh, dummy rounds. That's his thing. He doesn't kill anybody. Yeah, here you go. Here's some action for you. Oh, my God. And uh, the movie's got all kinds of, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, man. Uh, but there's a reason we all know each other, is that uh, we all got the, 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 the same vision for a lot of this stuff. But, uh, yeah, so that was my uh, that was my, my plane movie, and that was real fun. And there's a bunch of other fun sequences in there, too. Uh, there's an opening sequence in a van that is just like one of those uh, Jackie Chan type things of like, how do people even fit in these small spaces? You know, he goes like out the back of a, of a, of a, of a suburban and then comes in through the window and fights the guy and then kicks him out the window. And then, then the whole thing jumps off a, a cliff. He goes out the side window, grabs the girl and then, and then jumps to, to safety. It's like, sounds like the bus sequence in Shang-Chi. So it sounds like Shang-Chi was, you know, really, reflecting the, the the Asian Hong Kong action films. You know, that's a good point because when you started seeing around the time of John Woo, you started seeing John Woo type stuff in other movies and then you went and watched Hard Boiled and you're like, oh, this is what's influencing all these other, you know, everybody had two guns for about five years there, you know, and that's pure Hard Boiled and, uh, and, uh, um, uh, the killer, you know, uh, yeah. so, so yeah, this is, uh, has to be, uh, highly influential or, or at least in the, uh, in the zeitgeist right now, this type of action. But yeah, those, those two different sequences that are very Shang-Chi. I almost I, wondered if the guys that you talked to had, had something to do with the fable. Oh yeah. Andy Lee and those Andy guys. Lee. Um, the, uh, I watched this Shang-Chi bus fight, uh, again, because I remember I told you they, recently yeah, upgraded IMAX. a lot of the, a lot of the films to IMAX format oh, on, on Disney Plus. And so I just awesome. went, let me test that out on one of the kick ass action sequences from that movie. And it was just great. Fills yeah. the screen now and oh. it's Action City. Yeah. So that's Well really that's cool. what's cool. I've been going through some Marvel movies with my roommate and we just watched Iron Man three and I said, Well, now that you know who Trevor is, uh, I got two more movies to show you. One is the Hail to the King and then Shang Chi. Uh, so yeah, we're, those are those are in the pipeline now. And then she just watched the end of Hawkeye with me and I'm like now you gotta watch Black Widow (laughs) which is the gift that Marvel keeps on giving you know four Marvel movies in in one year they've made up for you know going a year without one God bless them man and just really the guts to make uh, the Eternals or Eternals I guess it's called a, a movie with only two civilians. Everybody else in that movie is a superhero and they've never done anything like that. And I, I, I once again, anything that people might've said about that movie in five years, everyone's going, Oh, it's a masterpiece. I've always thought it was a masterpiece. You know, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's obvious. It's going to go there. Uh, we had too much fun with Lon. There's so much to talk about. There's yeah. 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 Well, we're fed. There's Belfast. There's, I saw Julia. Uh, don't look up. I thought was something else. So, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. I don't know if we're going to have much time to yeah. get to the, the cool thing is have to talk about or just get to the Ford report. Cause we no, have- let's get to the Ford report because uh, Boba Fett's going to be coming out each week. So we got plenty of time to talk about Boba Fett, but, True. but I mean, I, and also I don't know if it becomes boring after a while because my, my basic opinion on all these things is 
They made a Boba Fett TV show. <laughs> look at that. Paul, look at that. That's Boba Fett in my like, lifetime in a TV show. And I've liked that actor for a while, so it's oh, good to see him. Get right? Him Once for Warriors? Oh, such a good movie. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. He's He's been great. Oh, and, and we just watched uh, Don't Look Up as well. But uh, we'll cover that next week. It's that's still yeah. Be, that's uh, around during all of award season. So is Belfast. And, right, right, right. And so we got yeah, maybe in the documentary stuff. race. So we'll, we'll we'll talk about all those. But in the Ford report, ah, eh, we still don't have a new episode for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we love Harrison Ford, but uh, Adam's been out of town. But now that you're back, we should schedule some recording to finish up at least the more American graffiti episode that we recorded the la- yes. latter half with with Bibiani. Paul, I'm going to. Oh, that's right. We got speaking of William Bibiani. We got him on the next episode of the uh, Ford Ford Report or of, of the next episode of the yes. Ford Fiesta <laughs> podcast. But this is a perfect advertisement because I'll be writing that script today. Paul, we'll we'll set a time to record that. Uh, I've already got the other part edited, so like as soon as we get this part done, oh, we're good to go. Uh, but yeah, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, the Ford Fiesta is a podcast that comes out tri monthly. And uh, <laughs> we cover every single uh, Harrison Ford movie from the very beginning. Oh, my parents don't. Oh, never mind. I thought that was a shorter clip. Uh, I was going to show that to Lon Harris, too, if he was still on at this point. You know, it's not on them now that they've delayed the next Indiana Jones movie to 2023. We can just be lazier now about getting to all these movies. We wanted to see, you know, one every week, practically, and, and make sure our last episode was right when Indiana Jones 5 opened. Uh, Would have been this summer next summer but either way it's so far we're pacing off ourselves <laughs> yeah we're, in, we're in the words of john winger from uh stripes <laughs> yeah. i'm pacing myself uh but but here here comes a clip from the uh soon to be hot off the presses episode of the ford fiesta uh which will be a more american graffiti with william bibiani oh. and the it, it, boy i gotta tell you this clip it's just it's it's so good because if, if you if, if you're a fan of ours, and I assume you are, if you're still watching, uh, thank you all for watching. But um, it, you know, it, we love when he points and shouts, and the the number of times. And, and if you go to YouTube, there's a point and shout montage that includes Is none of really? the points and shouts. Yeah. Oh wow. Someone but but on. Paul, it includes none of them that we've covered so far. Wow. That's what's so funny. The pointing and shouting, as, as far as the rest of America knows, uh, Harrison Ford fans know, uh, it, it, the bulk of his most famous points and shouts are to come. But we're finding them in everything. I mean, we talked about Frisco Kid. I mean, the guy points, there's a there's a series of like, you know, he, po- he points like 13 times in a row and shouts like 30 times in a I'm row. I'm sure the, the rest of the world thinks it started in the tunnels of Hoth in the Empire. Huh? Right. Huh? That's not huh? it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But but here's the crazy thing. In more American graffiti, it is but a mere cameo that uh, Harrison Ford is just making an appearance. Uh, and um, somehow he gets in a lot of points and shouts, a lot of points and shouts in a one and a half minute cameo, I believe here. So <laughs> please enjoy. Please enjoy his oh, the almost the entirety of his appearance in more American graffiti uh, and some great points and shouts, man. The guy can do it. Woo! Jesus, cop out! Pull over! Uh, yes, sir. Um, pull over there! Pull over now! Stop! We're trying to. What do you want me to do? Stop right here in the middle of the road? Don't you have any respect for the law? Keep going. Tell the law, officer. If you don't have respect for the law, what's in your mouth? Nothing. Pull over, I'll shoot out the tire! It's the best! How many points is that? It's already like four. Yeah, and shouts. Also, you get to see him in a cop uniform? Is this... It's breaking ground. Well... Well... What do we got here? It's one lousy joint. Arrest, friend. Ah, come on, man. You got nothing better to do than hassle long hairs. My life, friend. I love my work. <laughs> Take down his number. Make it easy for you, lady. It's 54362. Name is Falfa. Officer Falfa. <laughs> F-A-L-F-A. I mean, uh, how great is Harrison Ford? How great is Harrison Ford? He's the best. <laughs> He's the best. That's awesome. And, uh, and, oh, I thought this, too, as soon as I saw it, Garth, and good call. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Finished him. But he can't be the villain. Uh, He's a good-looking boy. 
Do you I, mind I, if I, I keep this picture? I appreciate the text you sent me of the choices on Netflix. Uh, they, oh, yeah. they advertised Apocalypse Now. I got it. With oh, you got it. <laughs> they advertised it with a picture of Harrison Ford. I love it. You know, yeah. And I texted you and I said, you know, they have a lot of choices of, of photos to use from Apocalypse Now, right? Yeah. You, I mean, like the stars. Like, like the stars Martin of the Marlon movie. Brando, yeah, they, went with, they went with Apocalypse. Oh, well, that's so awesome. They went with Ford. That's great. And I bet you some people look at that and go, I don't even know who that is. He's so young and you know, bespectacled. Uh, but uh, that episode, we recorded part of it uh, with the uh, great John Kaiser. And great John Kaiser. After more American Graffiti. Yeah, so that one's uh, coming up as well. And another small cameo. The cool thing about Apocalypse Now, and we'll, we'll save it for the uh, the Ford report next week, but uh, for the most recent Final Cut, they added like 45 seconds of Harrison Ford because he had a very small role. That yeah. was kind of cool to realize in real time. You're like, oh my God, we're getting so much more Harrison Ford in this movie. We'll, we'll cover that later. Uh, we're going to have a lot of, uh, oh, that's a good point, too. That Yeah, they showed Pratt for the money ball. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's a <laughs> Brad a Pitt's point. movie, pretty much. But um, At least Wind we, River does star uh, uh, Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Uh, oh, very underrated. Great film, I think. Um, <laughs> so that's the Ford Report. Check out the Ford Fiesta anywhere. Their podcast, audio podcast, your iTunes. Yeah, Paul's got them in podcast, everywhere. Your Amazon Music, your Spotify, your Pandora. You name it, it's everywhere. But my quick uh, thing that I always do is go into the garage and unearth an artifact, very Indiana Jones-like, okay. once a week on this show. And this time I found this. It's an old press kit from The Fugitive. Oh, wow. And I think it's signed by Harrison Ford. But the <gasps> point, but the real story is, I don't know why I have this. You don't know where it came from. I don't just know Just Harrison why. Ford stuff just comes into your life, Paul. It does. It just shows up one day. And so there's like, you know, the old, uh, you know, typed out oh over, right real press you, release the andrew davis film from warner brothers and you know all the information you need to know is all in typed out and no doubt photocopied uh right wow paper, and then there's a certificate of authenticity oh a certificate of authenticity oh hey major move <laughs> i'm learning as we go <laughs> it's only a, a certificate of authenticity to certify that harrison ford actually signed it there you go i'm learning oh. as i go Oh I have my no god. No idea why I have this. You have a Harrison Ford signed press kit. Yeah. And then wow. it's got, you know, little ads you can run, you can clip out and put in the newspaper. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's an actual in the newspaper papers kits. So okay, hey, I got a signed press kit from the fugitive. Major move. Major move. <laughs> uh, oh Garth, this is the one wrong thing you put today. I care. No, I know what he means. I don't care. He's doing these totally jokes, I, I don't care. care. Uh, so anyway, watch that and join us next week. We're, we got guests overflowing all this month on the Movie Nonsense show. We just had Lon Harris. We got more coming up. I think there isn't a week this month where we don't have a guest. So yeah, yeah, we actually are lining some some people up. So it's uh, and some old comedian friends of ours, and we have we're going to have a very. I guess I could preview it here. We don't know what day we're going to have him on, but. Uh, uh, because it's good to plug this product anyway. Uh, Brad Gilmore and Mike Kalinowski wrote a James Bond book, which is awesome. Uh, and uh, it just happens to be, I've been trying to have all of my uh, comedy cohorts from Schadenfreude on. So far, we've only had Justin on. Uh, but uh, uh, the daughter of Steve, our, our tech guy and co-writer, um, watched all of the James Bond movies in the last two months. Like, all of wow. them. And uh, so I'm going to have uh, him and his nine-year-old daughter on to talk with Brad Gilmore about James Bond. And I, I, I mean, mark your calendars uh, whenever we uh, add the, throw the date up for that. I think that's going to be a real hit. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Oh. Oh. both grabbed for the check too quickly. <laughs>